Dr. Salida Guy is a Toronto-based ecologist, data scientist, and science communicator who studies bats. Think of her as your friendly neighborhood bat girl. She spent 10 years working as a host at the Ontario Science Centre and has appeared on TV and radio. Salida joins us to share stories from her very first kid's book, Chasing Bats and Tracking Rats, Urban Ecology, Community Science, and How We Share Our Cities. I'm an urban ecologist, a type of scientist that studies nature living in cities. You heard that right, nature in cities. Although a city may not be the first place that comes to mind when we think of nature, our urban areas are full of different types of plants, animals, and insects. And as our cities grow, more and more scientists like myself, other urban ecologists, well, we want to understand how city living is impacting the many creatures in our urban environments. We also want to understand how living so close to this wildlife can affect us humans. Now, I love sharing with people how I do my science. And so I'm going to read a short excerpt from my book, Chasing Bats and Tracking Rats, that highlights one of my crazier nights in the field. This is a night that I had while studying the big brown bats that live in High Park, one of Toronto, Ontario's largest fully urban parks. So chapter one, chasing down big browns. How much does wildlife rely on city green spaces? The park is closed. What are you still doing here? Pausing, I looked up at the large, grumpy police officer standing in front of the picnic table I was working at. Around me were a number of strange items, test tubes for storing samples, a margarine container full of measuring tapes, a pile of tiny felt bags, and a kitchen scale. Beside me sat Krista, my bat-catching partner in crime. She and I were now several hours into processing the 25 bats we had caught in the chimney of a nearby house. I sighed. It was one o'clock in the morning and it had already been a very, very long night. Earlier that evening, Krista had climbed a ladder and dangled herself in a roost trap over the side of a four-story home. After searching all summer, we'd finally found our first bat colony in a neighborhood filled with old, large houses and trees. The people living in the house had given us permission to climb onto the roof that night. And as the sun had set, I had watched excitedly from a lower section of the roof as our, as our trap filled with bats. After an hour, Krista had lowered down a bag full of squirming bats. I had almost squealed at the thought of how much data we were going to be able to collect. Everything had been going perfectly until it came time for Krista to get down from that upper section of roof. As Krista stepped onto the first rung of the ladder, she slipped. Krista had fallen from the ladder and tumbled to the lower edge of the roof, but I had jumped forward and grabbed her by the belt just before she went off the edge. Thinking about it again had my heart racing. Krista's near-death experience had been stressful enough, and now the police officer shining his light in my face was giving me a headache. A ma'am. The police officer said, snapping me back to the present moment. Please answer my question. What are you doing in the park? Well, I explained that I was a scientist who studied the bats living in cities. I told the officer about the 25 bats we had caught and how we brought them to the park to collect information. The police officer nodded and asked if he could see one of my bats. I held up my gloved hand. Inside my closed palm, a tiny brown snout squirmed, trying to escape. It's a big brown bat, but they aren't really that big, I joked. The police officer didn't laugh. Where are the rest of the bats, he asked. Have you let them go already? I told him that we hadn't yet because it was cold. Even though it was a summer night, it was only 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. When bats get cold, they go into a hibernation-like state called torpor. Because they've dropped their body temperature to save energy, torpid bats are slow and sluggish and can't fly. I explained that we had to warm up all of our bats before we let them go. The police officer's eyes grew larger and larger until finally he put his hand up to stop me. Ma'am, 
he said, squinting. Did you know that your shirt is moving? Well, I looked down and sure enough, there were several squeaking lumps wiggling around between my sweater and t-shirt. Of course, officer, I grinned. Like I was saying, we have to warm our bats back up. So the rest of the colony is down my shirt and tucked under my armpit. And it looks like them, some of them are just about ready to start flying again. The police officer shook his head and took off pretty fast after that. Now, if you'd like to learn more about what we found while studying the big brown bats living in Hyde Park, or if you want to learn about some of the other exciting work done by urban ecologists across North America, please pick up a copy of Chasing Bats and Tracking Rats and use it to help you discover more of your own local urban nature. Why not upload your writing, your videos, and your ideas to the Creativity Club on the Telling Tales website? Thank you for joining us. See you again.